So thank you very much for your introduction. First of all, we want to send to the organizer, Alexei. Al Elena is not here. We, will, we want to send for their attention. And also uh, for, to give me the opportunity to present all result in this international conference. So the lecture today is about some joint papers with uh, Sejan Petrovic from Western Michigan University, Miguel La Cruz and Luis Rodriguez Piazza from University of Seville. And uh, uh, the aim of this talk is to provide a general view of the result and let me to say something about the structure of the talk. So <clears throat> we divided the talk by the nature into three blocks. In the first block, we will study commutant of composition operators. And the second, we study uh, the double commutant property for composition operator. And finally, we uh, will speak about, if we have time, about the standard taking values of composition operators. Okay? In this block, we will introduce some first notation, some basic definition, motivation, uh, basic background, and we present, we will present the problems, and we will present all results, avoiding technicalities when it is possible, just to present the result, okay? And, sorry, ah, here. Yeah. Let me to introduce the composition operator. If a holomorphic cell map of the unit disk, phi, uh, by composition on the right, define a natural linear transformation on the space of, of an additive function on the disk. And it's not so difficult to show that this linear transformation is, uh, is continuous in the compact open topology, or uniform convergence on compact subset of the disk. Uh, but what is, what is not so clear is that this linear transformation is bounded on the Hardy space. The Hardy space, which is Arwin, one of the most important. Uh, what is this critical uh, double T? Capital uh, unit disk. This is the unit disk. In the complex plane. In the complex plane. OK. Uh, I say the, the hard space is arguing one of the most important Hilbert space of analytic function. And it's not so clear, sorry, it's not so clear that this uh, operator is continuous or bounded in this space. And this is basically, basically the, the little word subordination principle. The hard space is the set of analytic functions whose McLaurin coefficients are square summable. Um, uh, this theorem opens a theory that in, uh, connects uh, functional property of the operator with analytic, analytic property of the inducing map. And at the present time, uh, is, this theorem seems to be inexhaustible. There are many people working on, on this area, okay? Oh, sorry. Here is the motivation of this talk, of, of our work, okay? If we consider this map just one plus z divided by two, the composition operators, uh, uh, which is induced by the symbol, is universal in the sense of rota. Basically, this say, that uh, he, we can describe uh, the, inv the, the invariant subspaces of this operator, of any uh, universal operator, probably uh, the people um, solve the invariant subspace problem for just studying the, the lattice of uh, invariant subspace of a single operator. Okay? This is the motivation. And <clears throat> there are two concepts related with uh, 
the invariant subspace that we are interested in our research, and the first one is the following. Assume that lambda is a complex number. We say that capital X, a non-zero operator, is an extended lambda eigen operator, provided uh, the operator T and S commute up to a factor. So lambda commute in the following sense. Tx is equal to lambda xt. Uh, this is connected with the invariant subspace problem because it's a natural, a natural uh, concept in mathematics, commutation up to a factor. But uh, there is some result of uh, Pierce and Scott Brown, which improves uh, uh, the Lomonosov, Lomonosov uh, invariant subspace uh, theorem. And, and say that here you have, uh, for a given operator, you can find a compact, a standard again operator, then the operator has an hyperinvariant subspace, non-trivial, okay? And the second one also was introduced by Viktor Lomonosov, and this is the, in, a, in an approach to the invariant subspace problem for uh, essentially normal operator, and it is the concept of strongly compact algebras. So uh, usually the algebra is the, the commutant of the operator. And we say that an algebra is strongly compact when his unit pole is pre-compact in the strong operator topology. Okay? So when we begin with these two concepts, and we was trying to, to work for composition operator, Quickly, we move to another problem, because both, both questions are intimately connected with the commutant of a composition operator. And this is the first block of, of talk. This is the first block. Sorry. OK. We change the receiver's task, OK? And sorry. The commutant of an operator is just the subset of all operators that commute with a given operator, okay? And, and the commutant or not of an operator reveals information about the structure of the operator. So it is important to know as much as possible about the commutant of an operator. For instance, if we consider ALK of T, the algebra generated by T and the identity, clearly, this algebra is contained in the commutant. And it's not so hard to show also that the commutant is weak closure in the weak operator topology, therefore contain the weak closure of this algebra, okay? And we say that uh, the commutant of an operator is minimal when the commutant is exactly the weak closure of the algebra generated by that. Let us uh, observe that he uh, the commutant of an operator is minimal, the commutant it is perfectly defined because every element in the in the in the commutant is limit, weak limit of polynomial in the in the operator. Okay. Uh, in a conference uh, in 1997, uh, Carl Cohen and Matt Kluwer pose the following question. For which maps phi is the commutant of C phi of the composition operator as, as small as possible? Which means that the commutant is minimal, okay? We discovered this question after obtaining our results. <laughs> it's curious. And for today, we, we will answer this question when uh, the map is a linear fractional set map of the unit disk, okay? Let me to classify or to say something about this map, okay? Uh, <laughs> if we consider the equation phi of z equal to z, this equation is quadratic, and there is one fixed point or two different fixed points. When there is one fixed point, the map is called parabolic, and the map may be Automorphisms or non-automorphism, two cases, okay? If there are two fixed points, 
Again, he one point is in the boundary, the map is called hyperbolic. And there are two, also two subcases, hyperbolic automorphism and hyperbolic non-automorphisms. And finally, when one point is in the interior and the other one is the, in the exterior, <coughs> in the exterior, <coughs> the map could be an automorphism, in such a case, uh, this uh, is an elliptic automorphism, or in the other cases, the, the map is losodromic, it's called a losodromic, okay? To try, <laughs> to try uh, solve problems for linear fractional self map of the unit disk for composition operator is a good starting point. Because for each case, uh, the proofs are non-trivial. And in many cases, we can extend these ideas for general maps of the unit disk. On the other hand, there is a classical theory by Carafiodori, uh, then Joy and Wolf, that say that any map, any map, any self map of the unit disk is conformally equivalent to a uh, fractional self map of the unit of the some planar domains. Okay, and this means that in the operator level, uh, any composition operator is similar to a composition operator induced by a linear fractional self map of, of the planar domain acting on the hardy space of such planar domain. So our, uh, <laughs> to try with this, with this map is, is very near to, to general maps, okay? Basically, it's a good starting point. So let us see some basic background. <clears throat> the first example of, uh, of uh, of, of uh, operator with some minimal commutant is a result by Donald Saracen that proved that the Volter operator has a minimal commutant. Some years later, Shields and Valen proved that an injective unilateral chief and the discrete Cheshire operator has also a minimal commutant, have a minimal commutant. Also, Shields proved that any injective bilateral chief has a minimal commutant. And Erdos was also interested in this kind of problem, solve it, uh, Saracen question, or Saracen proof by, by a, a simpler methods. Okay, and here we have a question for, for the people. Anyone, anyone know another example here of operator with a minimal commutant? Probably no. There is probably there is more example of operators with minimal commutant, but they are not too much. There are few examples, okay? So, uh, the history of commutant of composition operator begin with Carl Cohen and McClure and Bruce Croa and Warnes, which are a student from them, okay? And the first result is that when phi has this form when lambda is an irrational rotation, then the, uh, when the symbol is, has this form, Bruce Claude proved that the composition operator has a minimal commutant. And Tamara Warner proved that when uh, the symbol has this form, and plus some extra hypothesis that we will talk later, okay, then the composition operator has an as has not a minimal commutant. This includes OX, or example, one plus Z divided by two, okay? And this is our or result. We completely solve the, <clears throat> the we characterize uh, composition operator in, induced by linear fractional. The, the, the blue row is the result by, by Bruce Cloak, and the yellow was partially solved by Tamara Warner, okay? And let me to say something about what is behind of this kind of problem, okay? So imagine, imagine that our point spectrum, or operator, has a good, nice point spectrum, which means that, for instance, 
the point spectrum is open, okay? And every element, every eigenvalue is simple. Assume also that this uh, map, this is the eigenvector, in the kernel of t minus lambda identity. This is function, assume that this function is analytic. Okay? So imagine that you have this situation, and if S is an element of the commutant, okay, by applying this equation on X lambda, we obtain, since the eigenvalues are simple, we have that S acting on X lambda is zero, or S acting on X lambda is some scalar, which we denote abusively by F of lambda, X lambda, okay? And this analyticity condition uh, say that this, an, this function is analytic on the on the on this open set, okay? And the question is here if we can define f of t. We can the question is if we can define this functional calculus. Uh, and the first step is we can approximate f by polynomials. And this is what is behind of this kind of problem. Problem on approximation and interpolation. In fact, if we see here, uh, this result by Saracen, where it is proved uh, that the Volterra operator uh, has a minimal commutant, is a pioneer result in, a, in, in interpolation. And it, this result is more known in interpolation theory, okay? This is the... So let me to say something about uh, 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 our work. No? The first step on, in us, of our work was to pull together what is known about the commutant from, from McClure and his student and simplifying the, the existing proof. For instance, this is the result by Tamara Warner. If he is hyperbolic non-automorphism, and suppose this is a very strong condition. Uh, for any set in the unit this, the iterates, this means the iterates, is an interpolating sequence. V and S is the composition and time. If it is an interpolating sequence, which means that for any bounded interpolation, Interpolating sequence in H infinity means that for any bounded sequence, there exists a function which depends on the, on the sequence such that interpolate the sequence. Okay? And this is very strong. So we, <coughs> we must be able to drop this hypothesis just, uh, just using the Hanbana theorem. But the Hanna the, the Han Banner theorem in the operator algebra. And using uh, Dix Mir theorem, which is a characterization of the linear functional in the operator algebra. And if we consider the, the eigen function associated to the eigenvalue one, so this means that this uh, Toeplitz operator is in the commutant. And we can separate by a functional this uh, operator from the closure of the algebra generated by C of the identity. Okay? And so this is the situation. So this means that we can drop the hypothesis in Tamara Warner result. Okay? The second part of the work was to try to extend these ideas for general maps. Okay? And if phi is a univalent self map of the unit this, we drop we, the rotation, okay? And if alpha is the derivative at zero, zero is the fixed point, okay? 
we can suppose we solve without loss of generality that the physics point is zero. In this, uh, in 1884, Gabriel Cohen proved that there is an analytic function on this, uh, which is an uh, eigenfunction of the operator, okay? And the image, the image of, uh, of sigma of the unit this is called a coenic domain. This is the coenic function, and this is the coenic domain, the conic domain, okay? And here is our result. Assume that you have a univalent cell map of the unit D that fits the origin, and suppose that the coenic domain is bounded and strictly start light with respect to the origin. I will explain this, what is. Strictly start light with respect to the origin. If G is uh, the coenic domain, and T is a real number between zero and one, then it strictly start light means that T, the closure of G, is contained on G. Strictly start light. Start light only is this condition. So in such a case, we have that this, uh, the composition operator has a minimal commutant. And here there's many examples of operators with a minimal commutant. For instance, we consider any, we consider any uh, region, bounded region, okay, in the, in the complex plane, which, which is a start like with respect to the origin. So assume that this is the coenic domain, okay, of a function. So we can recover the map phi because the, these maps are univalent. So the map, you, you have a, uh, the coenic function and some, and we know the derivative of zero uh, of the map, we can recover the map because the map is exactly this function. because they are univalent, okay? So in such a case, this is a start like with respect to the origin, is bounded, so the composition operator is, uh, has a minimal commutant. <coughs> also, we solve a question posed by uh, Tamara Warner and, uh, and Carl Cohen. Assume that uh, he, he was thinking that if phi is univalent and the composition operator is compact, then uh, the composition operator always has a minimal commutant. And this is not true, okay? We disproved this, uh, this condition. Moreover, we obtained a general result on operator theory by proving that if we have an, an operator A such that the range of A squared is contained strictly on the range of A, then A squared has no minimal commutant. Okay? In particularly for uh, the example of composition operator, we have the following result. If phi is univalent and fix the origin and is not a rotation, now we require that the, the coenic domain is a star like this condition, only a star like, and uh, has no dense range. In such a case, the composition operator has not a minimal commutant. And the example that disproved the conjecture of Cohen and, and Tamara Warner is the following Assume that the coenic domain is a Ranuray disk. Okay? So the disk minus a segment. Minus a segment means that the range of the composition operator is not dense, okay? And now he we take T sufficiently small 
The composition operator, if t is smaller, with this when sigma is this math, okay, is compact. Therefore, by applying the, the, the last result, this is an example of, uh, of a composition operator, which is compact and the commutant is not minimal. Okay, next, ne next block is the double commutant. The double commutant of an operator is just the set of all operators that commute with every element in the commutant of the operator. Okay? Again, the algebra generated by T and the identity is contained in the double commutant, and the double commutant is contained in the commutant. Both algebra are weak closure, weak closure, sorry. So the weak closure of the algebra generated by T and the identity is contained in the double commutant of the operator. Okay? And we say that an operator has the double commutant property when this algebra is exactly the double commutant. Okay? This uh, notion before can be extended for, for subsets, okay? We say that uh, he, if A is a subset of the operator algebra, the commutant of a subset is the intersection of the commutant of every element, and the double commutant is the commutant of the commutant, okay? Quickly can be extended. And this is to uh, result that motivate this uh, this research. <coughs> in uh, in 1930, von Neumann proved the double commutant theorem, which means that he, uh, we say that for any self-adjoint unital subalgebra of the operator algebra, this uh, which uh, this algebra must be self-adjoint and uh, unital. Then this algebra has the double commutant property. So the weak closure of the algebra is the double commutant. Uh, some years later, uh, Dan Voiculescu proved his famous result on the double commutant theorem of Voiculescu for algebras in the Kalkin algebra. The Kalkin algebra is the, uh, the question of the operator algebra by compact operator. And here we have an algebra in the Kalkin algebra, which is unital, separable, and self-joint. Then this algebra has the double commutant property. So it is very natural to, to ask this question for single generated algebras, for instance, for composition operators. And this is the general questions for which map uh, the operator C phi has the double commutant property. And for today, we solve this question for in operators which are induced by linear fractional set map of the unities. And this is our result. The, the blue row is because these examples uh, have uh, a minimal commutant. When an operator has a minimal commutant, they directly has the double commutant property, okay? Because the, dub the, the double commutant is behind the algebra and the, and, the, uh, and the commutant, okay? We have time? Just a little, no? Okay. And for standard eigenvalues, <clears throat> how many time we have? 10 minutes. Okay. And <clears throat> this is <clears throat> our result for standard eigenvalues. We was interested, as at the beginning of the talk, giving a composition operator induced by a linear fractional uh, for the standard spectra of the standard spectra of the composition operator. The standard spectra of the composition operator is not a part of the usual spectrum, okay? 
is not a part. Maybe this subset could be unbounded. Okay. It is the set of complex number for which there exists x, an operator non-zero, such that tx is equal lambda xt. And this we return at the beginning of the talk. Because we was interested in the to describe the standard spectra of composition operator, and more interesting is the stand to characterize the standard lambda eigen operator. The standard lambda eigen operator uh, uh, is the forthcoming paper, okay? But uh, this is finishes uh, and for linear fractional cell map of the unit this. We, uh, we obtained this computation of, uh, of the standard spectra of this, uh, of this operator, okay? Completely. We, we, we finish with some open questions. The first question is, as we will see in the talk, there are composition operators which are compact, and whose commutant is minimal. And there are other compact composition operators whose commutant is not minimal. And the question is if it is possible to characterize the symbols for which uh, the, commut, uh, the operator CV has a minimal commutant. And the second question is about oh, the operator at the beginning the universal operator. Set plus one divided by two. The, the composition operator induced by this map. We have shown that uh, for this operator, uh, the commutant is not minimal, but, but this Composition operator has the double commutant property. Okay, and we we want to know how big how big is the is the commutant of this operator. More specifically, this is a question posed by Joel Shapiro. <clears throat> For this operator, we consider uh, the commutant. Okay. And we want to know if the commutant is strongly compact. Strongly compact means that the unit ball of this algebra is pre-compact in, in the strong operator topology. And this is connected also, uh, this concept, with how big how big is the uh, is the commutant of the operator? Okay. So this is uh, the paper where we have published, and there is a forthcoming paper which uh, is the 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 problem that we was thinking at the beginning is to characterize. To, to characterize the standard eigen operators of uh, composition operators. And it's uh, still uh, we're working on this on this paper, okay? It's not finishes. So thank you very much for attention. Could you return to the first slide? First. First one. No, just a little. It was this. Uh, ah, yes, here. This is uh, this concept A there. Uh, when lambda is uh, one, this is just uh, Lomonosov theory. Yes. Right? So yes. 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 So, but it gives. 
right? So uh, how how uh, does uh, well understanding some kind of spectrum in the sense? How does it help us understand the point? Uh, so there are examples, there are examples of, uh, so, <clears throat> but what is the question? So, okay, when, when lambda is equal to one, when lambda is equal to one, the standard lambda eigen operator is the commutant. Yes. Okay. What is happening lambda is two or something? There is an, also an invariant subspace. And this is a result by Scott Brown and Chevron and Pierce, who was, was proved independently. If you have a, an standard lambda eigen operator, which is compact and non zero, the given operator has an hyperimbolic subspace. Yes. In many cases, in many cases, uh, in many cases, the structure of extended lambda eigen operators is simple. It's just a, a single extended eigen operator by an element of the commutant of the operator. This is sometimes the structure of all extended lambda eigen operators in some cases. Okay? So in this case, doesn't aport more, more information because if, if you have this uh, factorization, uh, if you have an, ele an standard lambda eigen operator, you have a compact element in the commutant, okay? But we discovered that in general, the structure of the standard lambda eigen operator is not so simple. It's much more complicated. For it for composition operators. And probably for some operators, even we discovered that uh, in the uh, we discovered that in the commutant they are not compact operators, but in the lambda commutant there is a compact operator. Which is also new. Okay. okay. Thank you. Basically, when people consider commutants, they also consider weighted commutants. I guess it would be rather difficult equation. I mean, weighted commutants, but it also observes the function. Weighted. Weighted. I will wait. We wait. And maybe it's a separate equation. Just general one. Okay. Thank you. If there are more questions, then thank you very much. Thank you.